Oh man, I finally got my play set of ancient Greymons and everything. It only cost me like $300 for cardboard. That was so worth it. What? Who's knocking? I live in an apartment. Who, who's there? Wait, what? Why is it green? Hello? Hello what the there, fuck? Traveler. Huh? <laughs> I'm here to offer you some bargain goods. What? Bargain goods? For only $50, <laughs> I can offer you unlimited power. Hey everybody, Huang Zero here, and today we're going to be talking about the different price points across various TCGs as well as budget Digimon decks. This video is meant primarily as a new player resource to help players transition from different card games into Digimon, or if Digimon is your very first card game, this should help you make a very uh, easy and smooth transition into it. We're going to be focusing on the price of card games across the board, as well as, you know, showing off some deck lists that are very easy for new players to pick up. Just a disclaimer, I do not play all of these card games. Uh, I've only played a handful of these card games, so for a lot of these card games, I had to rely on outside resources. Uh, make sure to leave credits those resources down in the description below, uh, but please don't hold me to a torch. So without further ado, let's get into it. To start us off, we have four of the most popular card games in North America at the current moment. Do you know that these are based on TCG player prices for the North American scene? And for Magic, I understand that there are various formats, including Commander and Modern. Uh, for this video, we will be using Standard, but I do understand that both Modern is very expensive and Commander is the most popular format. Uh, but I wanted to keep everything quote unquote standard for the sake of this video. So as you can see, Magic's average price ranges for anywhere from 150 to the 300 range for standard specifically. Uh, Pokemon is actually very cheap unless you're playing Arceus, where then Arceus uh, you're going to be racking up into the 300 range. Yu-Gi-Oh is extremely expensive at the current moment due to the amount of hand traps you have to buy. It is very high price barrier, high entry barrier, if you say, uh, being almost a thousand dollars, and the one exception being Eldritch uh, because of reprints. And then Vanguard is now on average $200 to $300, so do keep that in mind for the upcoming prices. Following up, we have Digimon. Digimon is a, w a really weird case because Digimon has a wide a variety of decks. Uh, we see green hybrid with $31, and then you have red hybrid at $325. Uh, the reason for that is because secret rare and promos are quite expensive in Digimon, and red hybrid happens to feature multiple promos and secret rares, so do keep that in mind. Uh, so Digimon is ranging anywhere from dirt cheap to relatively uh, mid expensive. And then we have Weiss Schwartz. Y shorts is anywhere from uh, mid 100s to high 200s, and then of course Fate is on the higher end of Y shorts decks, uh, specifically because of their multiple expensive cards such as uh, Rin Archer, which is about 60 if I remember correctly. Flesh and Blood is an extremely expensive card game, although it is gaining steam and popularity very quickly. Uh, we see on the screen that we are ranging anywhere from 650 to almost $1,000 for a deck. Uh, do note that these decks are flexible and the price can be lowered, but we wanted to showcase the decks at their prime in terms of the pricing. And then the last card game we're going to talk about is Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z ranges anywhere from 300 to 500. I do understand a ban list uh, for both Y Shorts and Dragon Ball actually did come up, but uh, this video was recorded prior to the ban list being dropped, so do keep that in mind. Dragon Ball, to my knowledge, I do not play this game, uh, and so to my knowledge, I understand that it has one expensive card that more or less costs the entire deck, and then everything else is relatively cheap. So, with all of this said, let's delve into the rules for budget Digimon. Alright, and so now we're going to talk about the rules for our budget decks. So these budget decks, like I said, are meant to be primarily new player resources. So no secret rares, no promos, and no tamers that go over $10. These are the main factors as to why Digimon decks are extremely expensive at times. And so we're going to try to eliminate this and then see how far and how cheap we can get. Coming up first, we have the Red Hybrid deck list for the BT7 format. The price total for this deck off of TCG Player at the current moment is $43. All right. Notably, uh, lack of Ancient and lack of a Goonimon promo will definitely drive the price down. Uh, we're going to talk about the card choices, and I'm going to try to explain it in a way for new players to, you know, make sense of it a little bit. Uh, so our Digitama, 
We only play four Digitama because, you know, generally speaking, the game doesn't last long enough for you to go to your fifth Digitama, so you want a little bit of consistency in that regards. So we do play the four Kapurimon. Kapurimon gives you plus 1000 DP if you have a Tamer, so uh, very powerful across the board. And then we play four of each Flamemon. We play the four BT4 four Flamemon because this Flamemon grabs Red Tamer plus uh, any hybrid Digimon, so it grabs majority of your deck. We play four of the BT6 Flamemon because it gives us piercing. So for all of our damage, uh, when we're trying to, we can simultaneously remove a body as well as inflict massive amounts of damage. So that piercing it feels really great. And then we run the four BT7 Flamemon because it's a searcher that grabs a majority of our red hybrids as well as it grabs Takuya. We do play three Bokomon in this deck. Bokemon is able to search out majority of our deck as well, at being able to grab both Tamer and Hybrid, and then it also gives us memory to fund our plays. It turns all of our 2-cost Hybrids into a 0-cost, and it turns our Burning Greymon into a 1-cost. Going into level 4 Hybrids, we do have the 4 Vanilla Agunimon. This Agunimon is meant to just guarantee smooth transition into your higher level plays. It's meant to be very cheap ways to inflict lethal. We play 2 of the BT4 Burning Greymon, off of uh, Takuya, it will gain the plus one security attack because of its own effect, so it's actually a very cheap two damage beater, and with Pokemon it will only cost one. And then we play for the new Burning Greymon from BG7 because it is able to Digivolve over level four, so you have a little bit of versatility and has strong removal to get rid of cards like Bokopon. Next, we play four of the BT4 Aldemon. This Aldemon is 7,000 DP. It gains 4,000 DP if you have a hybrid underneath, and it has an inherent security attack plus one. So this is able to rack up damage very quickly in the early game. In combination with Takuya, this will inflict three security damage. We play four BT7 Aldemon. This Aldemon costs one if you Digivolve over a Digimon with a uh, hybrid or tamer. I believe it is a uh, hybrid or it's, it's one of those. I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, no, it, it's specifically tamer. It's specifically tamer. <laughs> I scratched that. If you have a tamer in the source, it costs one to Digivolve into. Uh, and then if you have a hybrid in source, it gets a plus 4,000 DP, making it a very prime target. And then inheritable source skill, it gets uh, what is we refer to as a delicate plan. So it shuts off all options in the security. They play three Emperor Greymon. Emperor Greymon is Blitz on Digivolve. It can Digivolve off of the Takuya with Takuya effect, and we'll get into that later. Uh, but it's a really strong way to pass the turn over uh, and then still attack for lethal or just attack for massive amounts of damage. And if your opponent blocks it, then for every hybrid source you have, you can gain that memory back as well as restamp. This card is very versatile and is really great at closing out games. We play four Atomic Inferno. Atomic Inferno is a one cost option that gives a hybrid plus 3000 DP and one security attack, so a very easy way to rack up those big uh, security swings in one go. And security effect gives all of your Digimon the following turn plus one security attack. So if you're swinging with um, from your raising, you're digivolving to digi uh, hybrid off of your tamer, they will get the plus one security attack. We play three Atomic Blaster. Atomic Blaster clears majority of the board against hybrid style decks. The, ma the main configuration you will face is going to be hybrid level four plus Bokomon, so Atomic Blaster will remove that. We play three Marcus Diamond. We don't play Ty because Ty is, of course, a $10 or higher tamer, so we played Marcus instead. It is a red memory tamer, so it fulfills the relatively the same purpose, and it gives you plus one memory if you swing with Emperor Greymon, so you definitely can work with that. And then for Takuya, Takuya is a lot of your play starter. It gives plus one security attack to a majority of your Digimon, and if you have a... Uh, if you have Emperor Greymon in your hand, what you're able to do is you're able to stack five hybrids from your trash underneath Sakuya, and then warp Digivolve into Emperor Greymon for game. So this is the budget list for Red Hybrid. If you want the full power expensive list, that is already on the Huang Zero channel, so be sure to look out for that. Next, we're going to talk about Blue Hybrid. Blue Hybrid uh, notoriously was relatively expensive because of a few cards like Davis, but we've managed to reduce the price of Blue Hybrid, according to TCG Player, all the way down to $21, uh, so getting right into it, we play 4 Kiaromon, so we're not playing Upamon to save on some money, but Kiaromon's also just very good. Kiaromon is whenever you strip a source from one of your opponent's Digimon, you're able to draw one, and you do strip quite a bit. We play 2 Strabimon because it searches, um, it is able to grab a blue Tamer as well as a hybrid Digimon, so there is some value in that. And then we play the 3 Siako and 3 Madoki Betamon. They are both Floodgate style of cards. Respectively, Siakomon stops Digivolution costs from being reduced, so for example, Aldemon, which we previously mentioned. 
And then Madoki Betamon stops memory gain outside of Tamers, so Bokomon, it can stop that. We play four of the Strabimon that from BT6, that is when a hybrid swings on, over it, or you know, a hybrid has this in source, and swings, you gain one memory, very, very strong. If the entire purpose of this deck is to be a rush-oriented style of deck. And so you want to try and rack up as much tempo as possible in the early game. And we play one BT7 Strabimon. Uh, while the search effect is weaker than the BT4 Strabimon, it is able to play Koji uh, when it's destroyed while it's an ESS, so we do want to have a little bit of that. We play two Nemon. Nemon normally isn't a card that sees a lot of play, but Nemon in this uh, specific scenario uh, will get a lot of aggression, being able to play both Tommy and Koji, so you have a lot more valid targets in blue than other hybrid colors. And then when he's deleted, you're able to play a Tamer. And then we play two Bokemon, Bokemon searches again for majority of your deck, as well as fueling a lot of your plays, giving you memory to digivolve into a hybrid over your tamers and then not pass the turn. As far as our level 4s go, we play 4 Kumamon. Kumamon is on Digivolve, strip 1 source from one of your opponent's Digimon from the bottom, it's very cheap, it plays into the Kiaro as well as the Tommy engine. We play 2 Kendo Gururumon. Kendo Gururumon, if you have Koji underneath or a hybrid underneath, it will gain jamming. Uh, so a lot of easy ways to fund that, especially with the Strabimons and the Kojis we do have. And then Korikakumon. Korikakumon is by far one of the strongest cards in this deck. Uh, Korikakumon, when digivolving over a Tommy or a hybrid, is able to stun uh, one of your opponent's Digimon without sources, so it cannot attack or block. Very, very excellent card. We play four Beowulfmon. Beowulfmon card, uh, Beowulfmon in this deck is very powerful because it's a one cost evolution over Digimon with Tamer in its source, as well as being able to bounce your opponent's Digimon uh, level 4 or lower back. We play 2 Howling Memory Boost, it's able to freeze a card similar to Kori Kakumon, as well as give you additional memory if you need it. One Ice Wall. Ice Wall is an absolutely ridiculous card that for the entire next turn, your opponent, whenever they would swing a Digimon, they would lose two memory, so memory blockers do not stop that. Four Hammer Sparks to give you a free plus one memory for zero cost, That, but do you know Madoki Betamon from your opponent will stop that. We play three Matt Ishida. So note this is not David, but Matt uh, instead is able to, uh, on whenever you hard play a blue Digimon, remove the source of one of your opponent's Digimon. So. And then we play three Sora Joe. Sora Joe is, uh, when a blue Digimon attacks, you may tap this Tamer and then strip two sources from underneath your opponent's Digimon. And then at the start of your turn, if your opponent has a Digimon without the source, then you're gaining two memory. So if you have Matt plus Sora Joe, you will go to five, and you stack multiple Sora Joes, so you can go to ridiculously high amounts of memory. And then you play uh, for Tommy. Tommy is absolutely insane. Tommy on play is able to strip three sources from underneath the Digimon, and then ESS, it has the Kori Kakumon effect, so that's super strong. Um, do note that Beowulfmon is also able to recycle your Kori Kakumons because Beowulfmon has to bounce back one of the sources underneath to bounce back one of your opponent's Digimon, so you can add Kori Kakumon back to your hand. And then we have two Koji. Primary reason we have Koji is one, it's a Nemon target, as well as working with Kendo Gururumon. And just in general, uh, the ESS ability is able to gain you additional memory if you, say, for example, bounce back with Beowulfmon, or you were to draw a card with Kiaromon. A card that you can consider in this budget build is Zulongmon, who gives you a little bit more finishing versatility. Now we're going into Budget Yellow Hybrid, which according to TCG Player is a total of $50. Uh, you will note that this is the deck that receives the most significant impact from being a budget deck. Uh, this is the most expensive deck in the current format, so um, losing out on a lot of those cards is going to hurt it out. And I'll talk about uh, where those cards normally would be. Uh, but we do have four Xiaomon. Xiaomon is a purple egg, so you'll notice that this is a yellow purple style of deck. Uh, Xiaomon is, if you have 10 or more cards in your trash, the Digimon under, uh, over it will gain retaliation, so death touch for the magic players. We play two Gazimon, who function similarly to Madoki Betamon, where it has uh, the ability to stop your opponent from gaining memory. Three Elekmon, who is on deletion, delete one of your opponent's level 3 or lower, so it's very excellent at deleting your opponent's Bokomons. And then two Bokemon. You'll notice a recurring trend where everyone is just playing Bokemon in this format because Bokemon is an absolutely insane card. Uh, Bokemon, again, searches the majority of your deck, as well as giving you extra memory to extend your plays. For Kazemon, Kazemon is vanilla hybrid that is able to digivolve over your yellow tamers. It can inflict massive amounts of uh, lethal potential if you stack multiple of these. For Zephyrmon, Zephyrmon is able to digivolve over yellow uh, tamers as well, but Zephyrmon's effect during your opponent's turn, all of your security Digimon get plus 3,000. Uh, DP, so it can make your security very, very beefy. 
We play four Jet Sylphimon. Jet Sylphimon is an absolutely ridiculous card. It costs one in Digivolve into if you have a Tamer in the source, and then on Digivolve heals one. So this card is very, very strong grind game potential. Next, we play two Dynasmon. Dynasmon is on Digivolve. Uh, reveal, I believe it's top six cards. It might be top five, but I believe it's top six. Uh, reveal top six cards. Add two Digimon from those six to your hand, and then re re mill the remaining uh, cards. And then once per turn, uh, when you would take a damage, heal a damage if you are at three or lower security. So. In grind gain situations, Dynasmon will keep you above water. A uh, really strong card. And then Seraphimon. Seraphimon is when Digivolving, heal 1, and then on deletion, heal 1. So again, you'll notice the, the recurring theme of is just a lot of healing in general, because you're trying to grind your opponent out. If you're looking for a uh, grind style of decks, this is a very great deck for you. We play four Schwartz. Uh, this is why we play the purple base, is to have access to cards like Schwartz. Uh, Schwartz is for every tamer or hybrid you have, then your opponent, uh, you can delete one of your opponents level five or lower. So absolutely fantastic card right there. Really huge board wipe potential. Two Blinding Ray. Blinding Ray is absolutely essential in this deck. Uh, for zero cost, burn one of your own security in order to gain two memory. So off of Dynasmon, for example, you can burn one, heal one. That uh, becomes free, essentially. Uh, you can use it to force yourself to lower security thresholds in the mirror, which will come up in a, a bit when we talk about it. Uh, and just in general, you can use it to extend lethal, for example. Two Tactical Retreat. Tactical Retreat is actually a really cool card. For one memory, you can choose a Digimon on your board and put it on top of your security. So it's essentially a pseudo heal. The reason you play that is because it'll allow you to dodge certain effects from the opponent. For example, the Sora Joe. Uh, so if one of your Digimon is frozen and Sora Joe would be giving your opponent two memory, you can use Tactical Retreat to play around that. And then ESS, when you're revealed from security, you just heal one. So very good card overall. One reinforced memory boost. Reinforced memory boost is six cost uh, option that states uh, reveal two cards from your uh, top two cards from your deck. Uh, heal one, add the other to your hand, and then you can cash this in on the turn besides the one you played it uh, to gain three memory. So overall, a very very powerful card. Three Wyvern's Breath. Wyvern's Breath is a security bomb that will blow your opponent out of the water if they aren't careful. It deletes majority, most Digimon in the game, including Susanomon, so Wyvern's Breath is absolutely fantastic. Three Holy Flame. Holy Flame is an absolutely nuts card. One of your opponent's Digimon gets minus three security attack, or it might be minus two. I believe it's minus three. Um, and then ESS, when this card is revealed from security, all of your opponent's Digimon on the following turn get minus one security attack. Uh, so similar to how Atomic of Atomic Inferno gives everyone plus one security attack. Holy Flame takes away that security attack, so it can stop your opponent from lethaling you. Uh, here we play three Matt Ishida. Normally, this would be uh, the yellow memory tamer TK, but TK is an expensive tamer, and so we're substituting it with Matt. This is a very significant substitution, so if uh, you want to play yellow hybrid to its fullest power, I would heavily suggest you pick up those TKs, but if you're trying to play on a budget, then Matt will suffice. Uh, it acts as a memory tamer, which, you know, that is a primary resource. And then it's also an enabler for you to use Schwartz. For TK Kari, TK Kari states that at the start of your turn, if you are at less security than your opponent, gain two memory. So this stacks on Matt, so you can go to five memory or higher, and this is where Blinding Ray comes in, because it allows you to go to a lower threshold in the mirror purposely. And then uh, the on attack effect, when you attack with a yellow Digimon, tap this Tamer, minus 1000 DP from one of your opponent's Digimon, uh, so that can have some very serious uh, board removal potential when it stacks. It plays for Zoe. Uh, Zoe functions what TK would do, so on play, check your security and add one hybrid Digimon to your hand, so it gives you a little bit more consistency. And then ESS, all of your security Digimon get plus 3000 DP. And then we play one Kari. Kari is if you're at three or less security at the start of your turn, gain one memory. So it, A, it functions as a yellow timbre, but also it just lends itself to gaining you additional memory. You will notice that a lot of the uh, cards that yellow hybrid tends to play may be missing. Uh, like I said, TK or Susanomon are the biggest ones that are missing from this list, um, but they are both a secret rare as well as a tamer that is above $10. So I will try to try to stay away from that, but if you want to play the deck at full power, you can look into those for sure. Now going into green hybrid, this is a red-green hybrid variant as the TTG total pricing is $31. 
Going into our egg lineup, we do play five Digitamas. Uh, so you know, if you may have noticed, we've only been playing four uh, Digitamas the past few uh, times, but this time we're playing five. And the reason for that is Mimi, which we'll get to. So we play four Kapurimon because uh, 1,000 DP for free if we have a Tamer is very easy condition to fulfill, and then one Demi Marimon who is uh, when you swing at your opponent's Digimon, or when you swing at your opponent directly, uh, one, plus 1,000 DP. We play four Flamemon. Now, Flamemon seems kind of weird. It seems kind of weird to play a red base in this, right? But the reason we play red base is to activate the red options that are very, very powerful, and in general, they actually are a nice consistency booster. Uh, Flamemon in this situation is able to uh, check the top three cards of your deck and add any hybrid to your hand and a red tamer, but we don't play red tamers, so that part is minute. But we do care about the fact that it is a 2000 DP body, so you can swing over some other opposing bodies, and it will grab any hybrid Digimon. And then we play for Gaussmon. Gaussmon is an extremely powerful card. Uh, it functions similarly to Siako, which was previously mentioned. Uh, Gaussmon will be able to stop the level 5 hybrids from Digivolving for 1. And then we play 1 BT7 Flamemon, just because it's an extra hybrid that we can play off of. Now, we do play 4 Bokemon. Bokemon, if you haven't noticed the reoccurring theme, is absolutely a fantastic card. I'm searching majority of your deck, including your Ancients, which we'll talk about in a bit, and then giving you additional memory to make your plays with. We play two Arbormon. Arbormon is a vanilla hybrid uh, that you will be able to extend off of your turn. We play four Beetlemon. Beetlemon is a green hybrid Digimon that stays on Digivolve. Check the top five cards of your deck, add one JP to your hand, who is one of the green tamers, and then add any hybrid to your hand. Uh, so again, very big consistency booster. Four Metal Kabuterimon. Metal Kabuterimon is able to Digivolve over a level 4 for 1, or a Tamer for 2. Metal Kabuterimon states if you Digivolve over a Digimon with JP in its source, or if you or when you Digivolve, if you have JP in source, or you have a hybrid in source, then you're able to stun uh, or tap one of your opponent's Digimon. Uh, level 4, or one, one of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 or less DP. Uh, so that'll allow you to beat over it relatively easily. We play 4 Rhino Kabuterimon. Rhino Kabuterimon, just like all the other level 5 hybrids, is only going to cost 1 if you have a Tamer in the source or when you Digivolve. And then on attack, you may Digivolve into an Insectoid or an Ancient Warrior for 3 memory. And we'll talk about that in a bit. So we play two of the Argomon. Argomon is a Digisorption for two. So what Digisorption is, it's a keyword, uh, it allows you to tap a, car, a Digimon on your board, and if you do, reduce this Digi Digimon's cost by the amount stated. Uh, so if you tap a Digimon on the board, including the stack that you want to Digivolve over, if you wish, uh, you can make this into a two-cost evolution. On Digivolve, tap all of your opponent's Tamers, and then as long as this card's on the field, none of your opponent's d Tamers are able to untap themselves. So in a hybrid format this card is very very powerful. I play two Ancient Troyamon. Ancient Troyamon is an Ancient Warrior so it works off of your Bokomon search and it works off of Rhino Kabuterimon. Ancient Troyamon is during your opponent's turn if they attack then you can tap two non-blocker Digimon and then when this card is deleted you may play a level four or lower green hybrid Digimon for free. So Ancient Troyamon is meant to deal with wide boards it's very effective at that job. And then we play three Ancient Beetlemon, who is, again, an Ancient Digimon. Ancient Beetlemon car carries similarly the same effect when destroyed, play a level 4 lower green hybrid, but Ancient Beetlemon also comes with the additional effect that when a hybrid or Ancient Warrior destroys an opponent's Digimon, you may burn the top of your opponent's security, so that has a lot of uh, pressure implications. We play three Thunder Laser. Thunder Laser is a one cost. If you have a hybrid or if you have a uh, 10 Ancient Warrior, you're able to tap uh, one of your opponent's Digimon. So it's a free way to inflict a lot of uh, pressure onto the board for relatively cheap. ESS, add this card to your hand. For Atomic Inferno, uh, Atomic Inferno is works. It works with any hybrid Digimon, so uh, you can target your green hybrid Digimon to get, rack up some serious damage. And then, in combination with the Rhino Kabuterimon, if you uh, target the Rhino Kabuterimon with the Atomic Inferno and then Digivolve into an Ancient, it will carry over. So do note that uh, this gives you a lot more security pressure in green, uh, and you may find that very helpful. And they play one Atomic Blaster, uh, which is able to clear out, again, configurations of hybrid level 4 plus Pokemon, which is very useful. We play two Mimi. Mimi is by far the most expensive card in this deck, being at $7. Uh, Mimi's effect is uh, if you have a level 5 or higher green Digimon, you can tap this Tamer to repeat your hatching phase. Uh, so if you have two Mimis on board, you can actually hatch and then pull out of raising immediately. That's a very, very powerful. It speeds up your deck quite a bit. And that's the reason we play five Digitama, so that way we have more Mimi fodder. 
You play one Ken. Ken is when a green Digimon destroys a Digimon by battle, you gain, tap this Tamer, gain one memory. Uh, that's relatively easy since a lot of your destruction is battle inflicted. Then we play four JP. JP is when a green hybrid uh, Digimon would Digivolve over this, you may be reduced uh, the cost by one. So you turn uh, Arbormon or Beetlemon or Metal Copic Cherrymon into a one cost evolution. And then ESS, give this Digimon piercing. So uh, in tangent with all the resting you're going to be able to doing, all the tapping, then you can uh, you know simultaneously remove a body as well as inflict damage. And then one is the Izumi. Uh, this is when you tap an opponent's Digimon, tap this Tamer, gain one memory. Uh, so this is not only a cheap tamer to play, to so choke your opponent, as act as a bridge for your hybrids, but also just synergizes with Metal Kabuterium on Thunder Laser. Uh, do know that you could also play pure green hybrid if you wish, uh, if you don't want to play the Christmas variant with this, uh, so that's also a viable option. Now going into the black deck, uh, the total TCG player cost for this deck is a total of $19, so very very cheap. We do play 4 Kapurimon, because Kapurimon is if you have a Digimon with Reboot in its name, get plus 1000 DP. So Reboot is relatively easy to access in this deck, so a lot of your cards will be getting that plus 1000 DP for free. We play 2 Hagurumon, uh, it's a vanilla Digimon that is a 2 cost hard slam, it's 3000 DP, so relatively beefy for what it's level. We play 4 Toy Agumon, Toy Agumon's ESS gives reboot to whatever is on top, so again, very easy synergy with Kapurimon. We play 2 Chumon, Chumon is able to uh, block your opponent from gaining memory outside of Tamer, so it functions similarly to Madoki Betamon. Then we play 4 Chikurimon, Chikurimon is when this card is revealed in security, D Digivolve one of your opponent's Digimon, so it acts as like a Lego, so your opponent's Digimon steps on that, they D Digivolve and they lose a lot of tempo off of that. We play 2 Numemon, Numemon is a 3 cost uh, hard slam level 4, so that's a very very excellent way to uh, accelerate your plays. If you brick on early game then you can play Numemon as an anti-brick. We play 2 Gardramon, Gardramon is able to act as a very big blocker, um, being 7000 DP means it will block almost every single hybrid in the game so it prevents an easy chip from occurring. We play 4 Tankmon. Tankmon is a one cost Digivolution overall with 6000 DP, so you know not only is it a big beater, uh, but also it is a very cheap evolution cost. We play 4 Blimpmon, Bl <laughs> Blimpmon is super hypey. Uh, uh, it's very deceptively strong because it's 7000 DP, similar to Octomon. Uh, being 7000 DP plus uh, Kapurimon with Toyagumon buff will make it 8000 DP, which means it swings over almost every single card in this format, making Blimpmon an absolutely uh, powerful terror to be reckoned with. For Gogmamon, Gogmamon is Digiburst 1 in order to give plus 2000 DP to any Digimon on your board. Uh, and that until the end of your opponent's turn, so that will actually carry over. And then ESS, uh, during both players' turns, the Digimon gets plus 1000 DP, so Gogmamon is a very, very excellent way to just pump up your numbers. Uh, we play 4 Waromanzamon, Waromanzamon is a vanilla level 5 that costs 2 to Digivolve into, uh, so it's just a great way to accelerate. And then one Megadramon. Megadramon is a 3 cost uh, inheritable give blocker, so you can make your top end a receive blocker, uh, so you just have a really big beefy blocker. For High Andromon, High Andromon is vanilla, 2 cost, level 6. Uh, being able to accelerate into your level 6 extends a lot of your plays. It's a very easy and excellent way to proc your Zubugan Punch. We'll get into that, and it's just in general a great way to bridge into your level 7s. We play 3 of the Blocker Reboot War Greymon. This War Greymon has both Blocker and Reboot, uh, so it just comes with the entire package. With Caprimon, it will hit 12,000 DP, and it's very excellent at walling off your opponent in general. We play 3 Chaosmon. Chaosmon is did you able to devolve over a green or a black level 6. Uh, when digivolving, you may untap this Digimon, and then uh, you can swing at an opponent's uh, Digimon, and including unsuspended Digimon as well. So Chaosmon is a great way to remove bodies, and it also has uh, piercing, so it will inflict damage as well through your opponent. So uh, if you combine this with Super God Punch, which we'll get into again. Uh, very, very excellent stuff. So final Zubigun Punch. We talk a lot about this. This is one of the cruxes of the deck. Uh, final Zubigun Punch for two costs gives one of your uh, Digimon plus 3,000 DP. If your Digimon breaks 16,000 DP, they receive uh, Blocker, Reboot, and Security Attack plus one. 
So uh, just really, really great stuff overall. It gives you three different keywords, um, and so it just turns a lot of your beaters into really, really great stuff. Gogmamon, if it boosts itself the entire way, it will be able to proc with Zubagon Punch alone. Uh, we play two Black Memory Boosts. Black Memory Boosts is when played, check the top four cards of your deck, add a Black Digimon to your hand, and then you can cash this in on a later turn to gain two memory. Uh, so it's a great way to set yourself up as well as increase consistency. And then you play two Izzy. Izzy is a memory tamer, so it'll set yourself to three at the start of every single turn. And then Izzy is uh, on play, check the top three cards of your deck, uh, and then you can stack that in any order you want. And if you reveal all the black, uh, if you reveal all black cards, gain one memory. So potentially he becomes a three cost tamer. And finally, the last budget deck we are going to cover, and it is by far the most expensive budget deck, is the Cherubimon deck. This is yellow base, purple Cherubi. This deck it has won and topped several tournaments, actually. I tried to keep this as close to full power as possible uh, while you know maintaining the relatively cheap cost, and that is why it breaks over the 50 threshold. Uh, to start us off, we play 4 Upamon. Upamon is, if you have 3 or less security, uh, you are able to draw one card. And then, so you may notice we play yellow base, and this is a purple deck. And the reason we do that is, spoiler alert, Cherubimon is able to play any, uh, any level 3. From your trash so it does not care about color um, and that's why we play the yellow level threes and so we play a four bokemon who is also a valid cherubimon target bokemon searches for a majority of your deck gives you memory if you call multiple bokemons off your cherubimon when we get there then you're able to just extend all your plays uh, very heavily i play three salamon Salamon is when deleted, if you have 3 or less security, you can heal 1, so it gives you a lot of longevity in that regard. 3 Bushi Agumon, it has Rush or Haste, so the turn. So normally Digimon, when they're hard played, they have summoning sickness, but Bushi Agumon doesn't have summoning sickness, so if you play it for free off of a certain Kenyatta, then it will be able to attack immediately on that turn. And then we have 3 Cutemon. Cutemon functions similarly to Siakomon, so it prevents your opponent from digivolving for a reduced cost, so it stops the 1 cost level 5s. I play for Loemon. Uh, Loemon is a vanilla purple hybrid, so it's able to devolve over your purple tamers. Uh, we play for Jagger or Kaiser Lo Leomon. Uh, Kaiser Leomon is if you devolve over a hybrid or a Koichi, it will gain retaliation. It's able to devolve over level fours for one as well. Uh, so it's a great way to extend lethal. It has retaliation to deal with larger threats as well. One Rebellimon. Rebellimon digivolves from a black or purple Digimon, and Rebellimon, when digivolving, discard one. If you do, gain blocker retaliation, so it will. Uh, it has death touch, more or less. So if your opponent tries to swing, you can block it and then force death touch. For Rihimon, Rihimon is the one cost level 5, so again, if you digivolve over a tamer, then, or Digimon with a tamer in its source, you will be able to digivolve for one. Rihimon, when deleted, if you have a hybrid in source, you will be able to play a tamer, any tamer from your trash, for free. Uh, specifically, purple tamer, right? And then we go into 3 Cherubimon. Cherubimon is a uh, 4 cost evolution. When digivolving, you may revive uh, one tamer from your trash one purple tamer from your trash specifically, and then uh, for every tamer that you have, you may delete one of your opponents uh, level 4 or lower, and then, or it might be level 3 or lower, let me just, uh, either way, uh, it'll be on the screen right there, but either either one. And then, uh, when deleted, uh, for every tamer that you control, you may revive one level 3 Digimon from your uh, trash, and it does not specify color, so you can revive a combination of Bushis, Cutemons, Salamons, and Bokomons. We play one Calling from the Darkness, Calling from the Darkness is able to pop one of your Digimon and then grab back any two purple Digimon. Uh, even if you do not have a Digimon to pop, it can still retrieve two purple Digimon. The thing about this deck is you want to have a lot of ways to facilitate popping your own Cherubimon if necessary. Uh, so Calling from the Darkness is a great way to uh, facilitate that. We played two Schwartz. Schwartz, as previously uh, stated, is able to do really uh, huge board wipes to your opponent. For every hybrid or tamer you possess, uh, you know, wipe one uh, level 5 or lower Digimon from your opponent. 3 Deathclaw. Deathclaw is a 1 cost. Pop one of your Digimon to pop one of their level 4 or lower. Security effect. Uh, pop one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon. So again, just another way to facilitate self-popping your own Cherubimon. Uh, 2 Blinding Rays. Because we have yellow cards in this deck, that means we are able to cast the Blinding Ray. Uh, Blinding Ray is 0 cost. Burn your own security. Gain 2 memory. So again, the yellow hybrid matchup. You can bring yourself into a lower threshold to deny a TK Kari, and then you can also use it to extend your plays. 
off of Memory Tamer plus Blinding Ray, you can go to 5, and then Digivolve into Cherubimon, go to 1, play a self pop, go to 0, and it'll still be your turn to keep extending your plays. 3 Matt Ishida, Matt Ishida on play is able to retrieve any purple card, any purple Digimon or option from your trash, add it to your hand. 1 Mimi Tachikawa. Mimi is a 2 cost during uh, both players' turns. Whenever either player casts an option, you may tap this Digimon to gain 1 memory. Uh, so that's a great way to stop your opponent from getting a lot of advantage. Turns their Death Claws into a 2 cost, it turns their Hammer Sparks into a 1 cost, etc. Uh, 3 Kari Kamiya. Kari is during either player's turn. When your security would be reduced, you may tap this uh, Tamer to gain 1 memory. So if your opponent hits you in your security, you can tap Kari to gain a memory and potentially force your opponent's turn over. For Koichi, Koichi is on play, you may draw one and discard one, and then ESS, uh, when deleted, gain a memory. So that's a great way to facilitate your discard engine. And then to Analog Youth, Analog Youth is on play, check top three cards of your deck, add any Digimon from the top three to your hand, mill the other two, and then... Uh, Whenever a level 5 or higher Digimon with sources is deleted, you are able to hatch a new egg as well as gain one memory. So uh, not only is it a cheap 2 cost tamer to facilitate Cherubimon plays, but also it mills and uh, gets you back memory. So when you pop your own Cherubi, you can tap analog in order to gain back that memory uh, to extend your plays. So. These are six budget decks that are very, very cheap. They're all under $70. They're all 60 or less. Um, so if price is an issue, if price is a barrier to playing Digimon, uh, then we have, you know, we have for you uh, very cheap decks to get into. Uh, hopefully that you guys enjoyed this style of video. If you like the skit at the start of the video, please let me know. Uh, my roommate and I worked hard on uh, coming up with that. And if you like that skit, then we'll try and do more in the future. So, uh, you know, thanks for, thanks for watching.